Mm. Might want to open the lid before taking. Intruder alert! Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of my Let's Play of A Hat in Time. And now we are officially blind. I ain't got a clue what's going on because we have an intruder and I don't know what's going on with them. So let's go check it out. They are in our engine room. Hey there, we're the Express Band. Just a bunch of owls that got together to play music while riding the Conductor's Owl Express. Is it okay in exchange? If you have any song requests, we'll be happy to play them whenever you have it in mind. Want up some music you hear in the different chapters, or want to hear us practice? Okay, you might actually have heard this one before. Alright. So, apparently they'll just jam and play music, so... While we're here, we can check out some of the stuff that's in here. Interesting. So this is like our engine room. This is our chair for the area. Oh, wrong button. This lever literally does nothing but alters how bright the nearby panels it is when the power is on. It's stuck on really bright, actually. It'd be funny as if I stood here and, like, smacked with the umbrella if, the, if it actually changed. It's a bookcase, also known as a cool cool word zone, or a thing you can't, can't even slightly fill it yourself. Steven, you'll never find a publisher, and all that time you spend in your study is time you could spend with your kids, depending on where you're from. A thing you can't even slightly fill yourself. Wow. That's kind of kind of a thing I'm gonna get back to this thing a seven state tri calculating quantum harmonizer is pretty expensive but who doesn't deserve a treat themselves every now and then it's true it's always worth uh, treating yourself every now and again for some for something you like but anyway this is something I wanted to... Ah, yes. The VGS-1. The fastest, most complicated supercomputer ever to be built. Boot it up? He yeah. You power on. A world of computing delight awaits you. Greetings, user. Undefined user. Welcome to your home computing experience. Open application. Well, we have to go onto the internet. Open application, search. You have selected the search application. Enter the search term. Well, let's see what happens. No. Wait. Ha! <laughs> That's cool. What resort res results do we get when we type in YouTube? Searching zero results found for YouTube. Your search has been submitted for federal review. <laughs> Closing search application. Open application. That's internet. Open application. Surf the net. You have selected the web search surf application. Unfortunately, the tide is low right now. Please check again later. Closing web surf application. Let's open the fun application. Open application, game, earth, or reassurance. Games. You have selected the text-based entertainment application. Open application, yes. You have selected yes. I will choose a game from my immeasurable library of purely non-visual fun. I have selected Corgi's Quest 7, The Leash That Bind. You are Corgi. Your name is Alan. You must serve sever the magical lease holding you in place of nasty holding you to this place of nastiness eggs are north east and south okay <clears throat> let's go north you go north there is a tiger exits are south and advisable 
talk tiger. Your attempts do not sway the tiger. The conf the conflict he has he has seen at the paws of your kind has given him strength such that the weight of your words is negligible. He mauls you very badly. Try again. You are a corgi. Oh. <laughs> uh... You bark. It's very loud and good. The tiger is unduly startled and mauls you real quite badly. Try again. Um. You battle the tiger with your claws. It's no match for your skill. Tigers are and will continue to be very endangered. You will be tried for your crimes. Try again. <laughs> yes. Let's go to the east. You cannot actually go east. You have been tricked. You are where your quest began. Exit. <laughs> oh, I don't know why this is so funny. I, I have done this before on the first recording, but... You go south. There's a set of gates south. They are guarded by a charismatic wolf. Exits are north. Look. There's a set of big gates. They are guarded by an impatient looking charismatic wolf. Exits are north. Bearing slightly east. Bark. You bark. It is really quite sonorous. The charismatic wolf rapidly shifts between spectrums visible and invisible. You're a dog. So, you really only see two colors regardless, so whatever, I guess. It flees and the gates are now unguarded. It would probably come back if you left, though. Let's go to the south. You go through the gates and arrive at a grassy clearing. There's a large canyon here. Exits are north and south. Look. There's a slightly dry grassy clearing. A large sweeping canyon separates it from another grassy clearing to the west. There's a character in that clearing. His name is Steven... Seven conclusions. Well, let's jump to conclusions. You attempt to jump to conclusions, but instead make a hasty judgment without considering the facts. You plummet into the canyon for several seconds before seven before seven levitates you out of out on their side. Sevens is a wizard. You're on the other side of the canyon. Sevens concludes it seven conclusions is here. Dressed very badly as wizards are often are so often are. There is a wizard's tower to the south, but it doesn't belong to them. There's there's they both look incorrect in capital letters. Is on the plane of yellow. Exits are south. You can you could go east, but that would But that would be swiftly followed by down. <laughs> yes. Oh, there's a big canyon like four or five steps away. Also, a large mauve wizard tower to the south. If you went towards it, it would be traveling towards. Tower. Towerwards. Sevens is here too. Dressed like a con concept of choosing clothes that look nice together was arcane secret far beyond their grasp. Exits are south. Tower wards. The tower, the tower wards. It's protected by wards. Talk. You make dog noises at seven. They understand completely. <laughs> the nearby wizard tower would, would, very likely hold a way to remove that leash. They say there's not much else around here. Otherwise, they continue. It's pretty sparse out here. Let's go to the south. You arrive at the tower. There are wards protecting it. Boy, are they doing. That in a passable manner. <laughs> Seven is here as they followed you. There isn't much else going on, they say. Exits are north. Look. Keen senses arrive at the tower. These wards, oh boy, these wards, they're magical, as expected. Seven is, words cannot describe, just terrible. Exits are north, though you watch your step, lest you be trampled by good taste and an eye of fashion as they are probably taking their route <laughs> in their flight from Seven's body. <laughs> bark. You bark. It is impressive on the scale that future civilizations will struggle to truly comprehend. Many scholars and academics will insist first-person accounts are fabrications and such bark cannot have occur ever occurred. Seven's descendants will sue for libel, libel successfully. Get this, six times. Wild, right? The wards disintegrate away into a spell weave or something, and the tower is open. 
Let's enter the tower. You enter the tower. It is airy and well lit, but that just makes it more obvious that the furniture is less... There's less a hand-picked furnishing and more a collection of needed objects that someone came to own as they became necessary. You know what I mean? The kind of match the effort of match the effort was made to pick similar dark woods and the styles aren't completely dissimilar. You can easily tell that the wear and tear has been some have been used longer, though, and the brackets holding the longer longer shelf on the wall are brass, where most of the other metal trims and pieces are iron. Seven has been knocked unconscious by a bugbear while you looked at the furniture. Exits are not available, given that you're you're in like a fight. I use sword. You wield your sword for dogs in a manner which you are custom. Which actually, you know, how how dogs use swords, right? I don't need to describe it. You slay the bugbear. Stairs, which. Which do not match any of the other woodwork are unguarded. Seven is on the floor, but they're probably fine. You try to go down the stairs, and it doesn't work because they go upwards. You go up the stairs all the way to the top of the tower. There's an altar and a magic book. Exits are down in varying speeds depending on on if you go a different direction first. <laughs> Look. You look really hard at the literal two things here. The altar and looks like a regular kind, but not a bad cult kind. The book feels pretty magical, but you can't read, so exactly in what way it's magical you can't really tell. Sure wish Seven was here. Real trooper, the, that Seven. Seven. Reliable. Go, Dennis. You focus your inner spirit and take in the magical energies of the book and the altar. Before speaking the words of power, power, you feel tangible reality slip away. In an instant, you are pushed Dennis ways. You arrive in... Thank you for playing the special demo version of Corgi's Quest 7, The Leash That Binds. Closing text-based entertainment application. Oh. I'm just going to play around with this a little bit. Earth. You have selected the Earth application. Earth. The greatest mystery of our time. Many academics subscribe to the theory that the Earth does not exist. This theory is supposed to be the fact that it's really improbable, and that's just where science is right now. Giving further credence to the theory is, by all accounts, nobody ever claimed to have discovered Earth. There's only records of people supposedly being born there or being told that it is real. The prevailing theory is that Earth is a mass-shared hallucination and that we should really just take things slow for a while and calm down to see if it goes so if it if it goes away. <laughs> God damn it, this game. Okay, one more. Reassurance. You have selected the reassurance application. You you really look quite nice today. Have you done something different? You're looking healthy. Don't forget to clean up and keep on top of things. It can be stressful if tasks pile up. You should go outside and get some fresh air if you can. It's good to get outdoors for a while. Don't forget to eat enough. Try not to miss breakfast. It's important. It's natural to have flaws and aspects of yourself you aren't happy with. It's okay to work on them at a pace comfortable for you. You have value. Take care of yourself. Be good to yourself and others. Closing reassurance application. Shutting down. <laughs> okay, that was perfect. I'm not gonna lie. That was perfect. But anyway, so in the last time we unlocked this and we have, we can either go here or we can go back to Mafia Town. I think we're going to go to, time rift detected, we're going to Battle of the Birds, find out where the two, where the, those time pieces went. Top review, two and a half stars. Actors, all terrible. Legal status, not, totally not allowed in. Oh.
So, interesting. This movie studio is too big for the both of us, DJ. Screws. The movie should be made by real birds. You moon penguins are just gonna write some loud, noisy frivol. If I wanted a bunch of picnics to dance around while on bird seed, ha! I'd visit my grandchildren. Wow. <laughs> nonsense, darling. Nonsense. You owl express birds are just gonna record another boring train related western. You've done so for the last ten years, darling. What? No, we haven't, your buffoon. Conductor, darling, this year we'll be winning the annual Bird Movie Award, as our new movie props will bring in the audiences. These shiny things fell from the sky. They will light our movie sets and fill them with glimmer. Oh, yeah? Well, this time around, we're also spicing it up with our newest movie props. These hourglass thingies will be the grand jewel in our train heist western. What the what? You no good, dirty picnics! You copied our props! I would never, darling. Clearly, you're the one who took inspiration in my flashy new props. Oh, that does it! Get out of here with ya! I've got a movie to record! Fine by me, darling. But we'll be the ones who win the annual Bird Movie Award. Mock my word. Hovering penguins. How well you do when you can't get into the reception. <laughs> oh wait, uh, chucking the picnics inside the studio will force them to work harder. All right, time to go, owls. Let's make our killer movie. And our uh, receptionist, can you please close off that vent already? I don't want the smell of penguin to come anywhere near my crew. All right, so interesting. I wanted to ask this reception guy a question, but he hasn't acknowledged me at all. Uh, but now I've been standing here for so long, it'd be awkward to start up a conversation. <laughs> I really suck at interacting with other birds. I get that on such a level. Oh, hey, little chirper. They're recording right now, so no one's allowed in. They're only insured for bird staff. Letting you in would be a liability. Don't even think about sneaking inside. <laughs> I want a squeak toy. I'm in a box. Huh? You want that movie prop they carried in? Are you the kind of person that sells movie props on eBird? <laughs> eBird. Uh, hi there. I'm an express owl, which really just means I ride the Owl Express that the conductor runs. I need to ride the train to get to work, but the conductor makes unexpected stops all the time. I have no idea why we're at a movie studio. I need to be at work in 15 minutes. <laughs> I don't really get this feud between the conductor and EJ Grooves. Like, why does a train operator and the disco guy want to compete? We're all birds here, right? Shouldn't we cooperate? I don't know. I guess cooperating is kind of stupid. I guess. Yeah. Just ignore me. Eh, I've heard of dumber ideas. Have you come to make another purchase? I have come to look at your wares. No more bonking against walls while diving. Upgrade your to a scooter. Huh? 
have you come to I still don't have enough for that but yeah I'm going to change up my... Yes! Oh, and I can double jump. Don't tell anyone this. But before DJ Groove became fascinated by movies, he actually ran a nightclub. I know. Crazy, right? Who would have thought? Hey! Watch where you're going, buddy! Don't get near DJ Grooves, alright? DJ Grooves means a lot to us, so we gotta protect him. Don't you think of anything, yeah? I'll be watching you, buddy. Eyes on you. I know it's an overdone thing, but I do like penguins in suits. Like... You're no bird, eh? Then what brings you to Dead Bird Studio? Before you answer, you should watch DJ Grooves' latest movie. It's real good, and I'm not being paid to say that. Honest. said only birds are allowed past here and he specifically said no penguins of any kind i have no idea why i'm just a passenger on his train whatever gets us back on the train faster so apparently we have a old nightclub oh crap So is this like the... So this is the ambiguous stealth section. Metal Gear. No humans allowed. Ice yarn, it's so cold, you've got enough yarn to stitch it. One, two, crystal. It's so cold to do a ground pound. I'll equip that.
Okay. Uh, time stop. Time ref. Dead Bird Studio. Oh, and there's collectibles in here? Interesting. Okay. Ooh, okay. I figured that I would take damage if I fell down, but you never know. Damn it. I'm gonna die here. Damn it. Okay. Okay, and now we have crown tokens. Interesting. Did I ever mention that this game is somewhat floaty? Because if I hadn't, it is. Yeah. 
Oh good, that, that's still there. Alright, and I'm full health. On to the next section. There's a piece of paper pinned to this crate. It's a receipt for a bunch of prop supplies. Weird, seems like someone stuck a copy of Corgi Quest to the ore. Doesn't seem to have a deli been delivered properly. Looks like they got a crate of fish instead. Huh. Interesting. This is, this is just lighting. Okay. I love doing the Superman, the, the dive. One of the cool things about the dive is you have the recovery, which kind of gives you almost a triple jump. The, uh, <clears throat> the, um, the dash kind of give really, it does kind of give you a triple jump. The Superman dive.
Alright, I think... Oh, no, there's something else. Gonna have to do some out of the box thinking. What's with the puns today? Like, I know I like them, but there's even a limit for me. Oh, there's the umbrella hat. Doing its job. <sighs> okay. We're getting back. So... Okay, well, that's enough for me. Alright, let's get out of here. Let's get on to the next segment. Oh, crap. I didn't see that. Obviously. Um, hmm.
This seems overly simple. Not that I'm complaining, mind you. Stealth sections. I am the best of them. Oh. At least it's there at least the field of view is fairly well defined. I'm not having to guess on that crap. Oh, this campus. Alright, I'm gonna try and get onto that platform over there. Is there only one of them now? Yeah, it looks like there's only one. Nope. Like a boss? Are you telling me this is just here for decoration? There's nothing I can get from here? Or... Huh. Okay.
So is that gonna boot me? So, conductor and grooves, big dream. Oh, roll it. Um, no, I'm gonna re-roll. A new color. Let's try my luck. A new color. I'll claim it. And why not? Let's equip it. So is that gonna kick me back to the ship, or? Yes, it's going to kick me back to the ship. Ooh. I like this. It actually matches my uh, speed hat quite a bit. So, where are we in the recording? I have no idea. Oh, is that how long we've been recording? Holy crap. This is your bleeding edge, top of the line audio device. Without it, you couldn't be able to tune in to all your favorite radio broadcasts like Inc. Acquaintances at the Table, Goodbye from Sunshine Town, or Two Brothers, and also a third additional brother, myself. <laughs> but anyway, it looks like we have gone well over what I normally want to do. So. I want. So thank you guys for watching, for sticking with me through this long episode, and until next time where we will continue our journey through A Hat in Time and maybe going back to Mafia Town, I'm not 100% sure. But until then guys, thank you for watching. Goombye!